Hey everyone, it's Pink Guy the Glitch here, and today we're going to be talking about GMOs. Now, this is a very controversial uh, subject, and this is going to be a, a bit more of an educational video, to so to make sure that you don't get bored, I've got a gameplay behind me. So in this gameplay, you're going to get to see me Shrek some noobs on the uh, with the Axeman kit on the Mindplex. I've got some pretty fine moments in this gameplay, and you're also going to get to see me uh, maybe play some micro battles at the end. But anyways, uh, GMOs. You've probably heard the term before, right? You probably heard about it maybe on TV or on the news or in an article somewhere. And chances are you've also heard that they're bad for you. But do you know why that they are bad for you? Do you know why people say that they're bad for you? Why there's all of this concern? What, what, where, what, what everyone's, what, what the science is going on here? It's my hope that by the end of this presentation that you will be able to answer these questions for yourself and that you will be able to make more educated decisions about the food that you eat and also have a greater peace of mind at the end, at the end of the day. So... GMO, what does GMO stand for? First of all, um, GMO stands for genetically modified organism. Now you may be wondering to yourself, why on earth would we want to genetically modify an organism? And I believe that Bill Nye said it best when he said that the three main reasons that we would want to genetically modify an organism is for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Now what does it mean to genetically modify something? Well, every single organism, plant or animal on this planet has genes, which are or uh, otherwise known as DNA, which is a set of instructions that dictate what kind of traits an organism will have. And we want, when we, as soon as, for as long as we have been farming our crops, such as our, our plants and animals, we have been adapting these genes, these traits, these sections of DNA to better fit our needs. So, um, for example, uh, we've used three methods to do this. One is selective breeding. And you're probably already somewhat familiar with the way that this works. Basically, you get two parent organisms. It can be a plant or an animal. And you breed them together, and you look at the offspring. And hopefully, the offspring will inherit the good traits that uh, their parents had, and the bad traits will be weeded out. Um, another technique that we've used to adapt our food to better suit our needs is mutagenesis. Now, this is a, a, a more new technique. It's been around for around 50, 60 years. We've been using it without any problems. And... It has been used to create things such as the Ruby Red Grapefruit, Cairo 76 uh, Rice, I believe, and Golden Promise Barley, which is, is the secret ingredient in different kinds of whiskeys and things like that. And um, basically what this process is, is we take a handful of seeds or abouts and you expose them to radiation inside of a laboratory. Now remember, radiation uh, scrambles and mutates the DNA. And when you mut mutate the DNA, you change the instructions. And so... Uh, imagine the genes as uh, letters inside of a um, Scrabble bag, like, like Scrabble letters. And mutagenesis is like dumping the letters out on the table and hoping that they form a sentence because you never know what's going to be happening inside of the DNA when it's being scrambled by the radiation, right? And so you might, it might take you millions and millions of tries in order to get something, get a sentence that's the, where the letters just some, some miraculously line themselves up. But with GMOs, um, using the same example of the Scrabble bag, it's like looking in, it's like looking inside of the bag and choosing the letters that you want and placing them to form a sentence. And it's much more efficient, much more direct, much easier to reach a desired result. You know, the sentence that you get by dumping the pieces out might not even be a good sentence. It might be, you know, something weird. But anyways, um, so how can this be applied in real life? So for example, say you have plant A over here, and plant A has, uh, it's its the best plant ever, it produces the best fruit, but it has one bad gene, which makes it sad if it, the plant gets overwatered, it dies. Now you have plant B over here, which is the wimpiest, worst plant in the world, except it has one good gene that allows it to survive being overwatered. With GMOs, you can take that good gene, and you can plug it right into plant A over here, and plant A will inherit that good trait, and now it is the best plant ever, and it doesn't die when it gets overwatered. Now, this might take you hundreds of years you know, and millions and millions of tries to achieve with mutagenesis or with selective breeding. But with GMOs, we are able to take the traits and reprogram them directly. Now, I'll give you a couple of examples of how this works in real life. So, for example, you can it doesn't even have to be the same species anymore. You can take a fish, for example, and um, maybe this fish has a certain gene in it. This, this is real. People have done this in real life. Now, this fish has a gene in it which allows it to survive in colder temperatures. Now, you take that gene and you put it into, into a tomato. 
and now the tomato has inherited that trait that allows it to survive in colder temperatures. And so you can see where some of the controversy comes from with this, where some people might say, this tomato has fish genes inside of it? How can that be good? And how can that be safe? And then they, they conjure up images inside of their minds of like half fish, half tomato organism in like science fiction, like Frankenstein's monster in Jurassic Park, where they mess around with the DNA and with the, you know, stuff like that. And then it goes horribly wrong. But real life is different. Real life is not so um, exciting, <laughs> to put it uh uh, like to, to put it like that um what's, what's really happening here you got to understand what this dna is doing and what the dna is not doing so the dna is not affecting the flavor it's not affecting the behavior of the tomato it doesn't go and try to swim in the ocean it's not it is not at all like a half fish half tomato thing it's 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 still a tomato it just now has a good trait which allows it to survive in colder temperatures and now i'll give you another example of a good GMO where they did this. Uh, there's this certain breed of papaya called um, the rainbow papaya. And basically what it is, is it's... Uh, well, there was this virus called uh, ring spot virus. And it was absolutely crippling the trees, making it so that they couldn't produce fruit anymore. And so the solution that they came to to fight off this virus in the papaya trees is they took a little bit of the DNA from the vi virus itself and they put it inside of the papaya tree. And that made the papaya tree immune to the virus. Sort of like a flu shot makes you immune to the flu. So um, that's why uh, around 70% of our papayas that we produce in the U.S. are GMO because we have to have them be genetically modified like this in order to make them immune to this disease, which was crippling the trees. And um, they did extensive tests on these papayas and there was no detriment to safety or quality or um, anything of the sort. And... That's where it's still in use today, basically. Now, uh, there are some GMOs which are, are not as good as the examples that I mentioned before. So, for example, there's this one GMO that people commonly cite when they're making like a documentary or like you commonly hear anti-GMO activists talk about this. But this is there's this GMO called Roundup Ready. And basically what it is, is it's a GMO that was made by Monsanto, which also um, manufactures Monsanto weed killer. And basically what the genetic modification does is it makes the plant so that it is immune, that it doesn't get affected by the weed killer. And so what this, the uh, unintended consequence of this GMO was, was that farmers started spraying more pest, uh, more herbicides on their crops, more Roundup weed killer, and because now their plants could withstand it. And the and when they spray more and more powerful herbicides on their crops, you know, obviously that's not going to have, con you know... It's not safe to eat herbicide, is what I'm trying to say. So that causes health problems just by itself. And so I believe that's the GMO that they were using that in that famous rat study, where they, you know, they held up the rats and they've got like tumors and cancer all over them. By the way, that study was later retracted because it turned out that they used a certain rat in the production of that experiment, where uh, that was extremely prone to getting cancer. So. It could get cancer just by overeating or by eating a certain fungus which grows in the corn, which is harmless to humans, but it gives the rats cancer. But So that study was later retracted. But um, let me say this. Even if it was true that the, the Roundup crops were causing the cancer in the lab rats, that doesn't mean that all GMOs cause cancer. In fact, there are some GMOs which modify um, potatoes to, to make them so that they don't produce a certain chemical that can cause cancer when the potato is fried into french fries. So GMOs can actually help pr uh, reduce cancer. So what I'm trying to say here is don't judge GMOs just by the fact that they're GMOs. You, you gotta look at the GMO itself. They all need to be judged individually because they all do different things. So just, you know, they need to be carefully inspected, right? And you need to say, okay, this is a good GMO. It doesn't have any negative consequences. So we'll allow this to be continue continue on. Whereas this Roundup Ready crop, you know, maybe we should get rid of this. Maybe we should reformat it so that it's more safer or put it back on the drawing board or get rid of it, you know? So uh, it's a hasty generalization, which is a flaw in logic when people say, uh, look at this GMO. This GMO, it's uh, this GMO is bad. So therefore, all GMOs are bad. No, all GMOs are different. All GMOs need to be evaluated separately. Don't allow yourself to make this flaw in logic. You wouldn't accept this anywhere else. So don't accept it here. Now that you know what's going on. So um, also, uh, furthermore, if there was any doubt as to the safety of GMOs, uh, there was this hundred billion animal study that Forbes magazine did a report on, where they 
um, literally watched a hundred billion animals, and that's a lot of animals. And these animals ate a total of a trillion meals over the course of 20 years, and the study found absolutely no uh, link between early death or sickness or cancer and the animals eating the GMOs. And studies like this, where they survey 100 billion animals, absolutely smash, absolutely replace these older studies where they ha surveyed like a handful of 20 lab rats inside of a laboratory, right? Because the more animals that you survey, the more accurate your results are going to be. That's um, one of the things, that's one of the fundamentals of science, you know, the bigger your sample size, the more accurate result. So, you know, just... I just want you to think about this. Hopefully this is giving you some something to think about, and I would encourage you, not not just here, but in all areas of life, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, and don't um, don't allow some the, the, the bad parts of a certain set, you know, like GMOs, to taint your vision of the good side, right? Um, it, GMOs are a technology that we need to use responsibly. I'm not saying that we can just do whatever, but, you know, really think about is this a good thing well then keep it if it's a bad thing then get rid of it or change it right don't throw the baby out with the bathwater or throw out the entire orchard just because of a few bad apples is what i want to say so um we have a couple more uh minutes so i'm just going to ask some questions for you guys now you can either comment this down below or you can just write this down somewhere in your journal or whatever or just think about it inside of your mind um okay so the first question that i have for you is where else in your life have you been making hasty generalizations? If you haven't, if none come to mind, that's great. But um, I know that I have made a couple of hasty generalizations. So uh, where, in other words, where have you been jumping to conclusions too quickly? Um, I'll give you an example. For me, I, uh, I took piano lessons when I was younger and I absolutely hated it. And I thought, you know, I am never going to take... A, you know any type of music lesson again because I absolutely hated piano so bad and you know that means that all instruments are going to be this tough to learn that are going to be this unenjoyable but now I'm learning how to play guitar and now I'm learning how to play uh, like a launch pad and stuff and I wanted to start making music and now I'm a lot happier I found something that I like so have you been doing something like that where you're, you've been letting fear hold you back and this, this sort of leads me into my second question where have you been letting fear hold you back in your life? Now, I know I'm guilty of this as well, um, but maybe for you, maybe you want to, uh, maybe you have a dream or something like that, that that's kind of risky, but maybe you want to open up your own business, or if you have a business already, maybe you want to take it to the next level, but you're like back here saying, oh, well, uh, I don't know if I should really chase that dream, you know, what if I fail? What if I... What if, you know, I, maybe it would be better to stay back here where it's all safe, where I've got everything figured out rather than taking risks and stepping into the unknown. And you know what eventually happens is that your dreams pass you by because you didn't give yourself the opportunity to have them come to fruition, to make them happen. You know, chances are your dreams aren't going to happen on their own. Sometimes you have to step out and take, have a little faith in yourself, have a little faith, um, Take, take a little risk. And I mean, obviously, don't be like, YOLO, I'm going to just do whatever I want. You know, carefully uh, watch your steps, right? Carefully consider what you're doing first. And just like with GMOs, you know, don't just do whatever you think would be fun or, or cool or whatever. You know, you've got to carefully consider, is this a good idea? Is this a good GMO? Or is this a bad idea? Is this a bad GMO? Right? Carefully weigh your ideas, but don't let fear paralyze you. Don't let it hold you back, right? If you've got a dream chase that dream. If you want to do something, you know, go ahead and do it. If you, if you think it's a good idea, if you think that there's, if you have reason to believe that there is a good chance that there is something good waiting for you at the end, go ahead and do it. Don't worry. It's going to be all right in the end. Of that, I am pretty sure. And for that one person out there, I know you know who you are. You're just sitting there like, oh, is, is he talking to me? Uh, yes, I am talking to you. And yes, you should ask her out. Do it. D d do it. Okay? D I was about to do something copyrighted there, but I you, you probably already know what I was going to do. So just just envision it in your mind. Just just do it. Okay? There's nothing bad that could happen except that she says no, and then you got to move on in life and find someone who's even better than that. Okay? Just do it. Just do. 
Okay, I've calmed down now a little bit, but uh, thank you guys so much for watching. It was a lot of fun to make this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. And if you did, don't forget to give it a big fat thumbs up down below and maybe follow me and uh, leave some comments. Leave some questions for me in the uh, comment section down below if you've got any uh, more questions for me. There's a lot of stuff that we didn't get to cover today because I ran out of time, but uh, maybe I'll make a follow-up video answering your questions because there's a lot of stuff that we didn't get to talk about that I would like to talk about in the future maybe. So leave your questions down below and um, yeah, and as always, stay awkward my friends. I love to read ingredients lists. It is it is my secret hobby. Check this out. Whole grain oats, sugar, mm. oat flour, corn syrup, modified cornstarch. Ew! Oh, gross! Get that away from me! There was a GMO in my hands. Just now. Oh, that's so nasty. Man, I'm glad I didn't eat any of that. Or else I might have developed like a- grown like a third arm out of my- uh, <laughs> ah, GMOs! Oh, this is not how I wish to die! Ah, 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 ah.